Hello, I'm with Ron Porter from Andox, and we're going to be talking about network automation. Now, of course, operators have long talked about automation as a goal. Why has it become so urgent, Ron? So I think we're seeing, you know, now this continued evolution of, of the network, but, you know, it's really accelerating at this stage, right? Uh, it started with uh, in SDN and NFV quite a few years ago, uh, accelerated with 5G, and now even more with 5G standalone and the different options it brings to the network. Uh, the convergence of cloud and network, different types of edges that can be uh, uh, introduced into the network. ORAN, and I mean, of course, virtualized RAN first, ORAN as, as the second stage. So all of these different elements um, add this whole angle of the network being much more multi-vendor, multi-domain, much more dynamic, much more real time. Uh, so, you know, to the extent that now automation is becoming a must, right? It's not an option anymore, right? If operators want to be able to handle this increasing complexity in the network, um, you know, they must follow on this path to automation. This in parallel to the continued, you know, the, the, the goal of reducing OPEX and, and moving towards, you know, reducing people in the NOC, even moving to, to more dark NOC um, is, of course, another key driver for automation. And on top of that, I think it's important to emphasize also the drive for new services, all of the cool use cases we're seeing, which, right, some of them still remain elusive, right? The 5G use cases in the killer app. But, you know, if you want to be able to provide, uh, um, you know, specific performance from the network, be it low latency or localization or precise positioning, you know, different types of stuff you will be providing from the network, automation will be key to make sure the service got what it needed and that it's maintained along the life cycle of the service. Okay, well, something else that we've heard a lot about apart from automation or it's certainly linked is network slicing. So mm -hmm. why aren't we seeing it yet? So I think, you know, network slicing, I talked before about this evolution of the complexity of the network. And there was always, when talking about 5G, there was a lot of hype about network slicing, even to the extent I think today it's a little bit of a victim of its own hype. Right? The focus was always, from the marketing perspective, uh, focus on the use cases, right? AR, VR, remote surgery, connected cars. We're still seeing those use cases, uh, but there wasn't a focus on the how, right? Slicing was talked about, again, as a buzzword. Um, and now we're getting to the practical stage, right? 5G radio was rolled out. Now more and more 5G standalone cores are being rolled out. And of course, 5G core is a must for the slicing. So now we are getting to the stage where we can start to see the network slicing, right? Before we had the 5G core, it was still, you know, theoretical. Um, but again, it comes back to the subject of complexity we talked about before, you know, maintaining a specific service intent, a requirement of the service, a quality of a service, what it needs across these multiple domains and slice by, by definition goes across multiple domains, right? The RAN access, uh, um, uh, the, the edge, transport, core, even into the cloud. Uh, all of this adds a lot of complexity and it's a new way of operating the network. Um, and to an extent, I think this, this dynamic nature and this complexity made a little bit of shift in the industry. I think last year we saw this shift from talking all about slicing to talking much more around PEN, private enterprise networks, which is much more localized and simple to, to, to materialize. Um, but again, because it's simpler, I think many, many different players can do it besides service providers. So that's another consideration. But the good news is I think we are seeing more advancements into slicing, but it's much more on the operational and the practical side, right? We're doing quite a few POCs in how to operate this uh, you know, multi-domain slice and maintaining the service intent. And these are the first steps, right? So getting the hands dirty and getting real with slicing um, is where we are today. It will still take a, you know, a couple of years for use cases to start materializing and see how we, we, we live up to the hype. Okay, well, you touched on something very important there, and that was that word intent. Can you talk a little bit more about it and why is it so important? So once again, the, con the concept of intent, right, is instead of me telling the system specifically what to do and how to do it, I just tell you know, what I want, and the system is smart enough to, to make it happen. Uh, an example we often use is around navigation, right? That if I don't want to get uh, um, 
you know, give specific instructions of turn right here and turn left there and go over here. I want to tell my navigation systems, get me to, to this and this address. And that it's, it's smart enough to know the optimal solution in itself. And it's also smart enough to adapt, right? If there's a, an, an accident or congestion, it will find a new optimal route to best serve my intent, my need, which is to, to of course, minimize the time of driving. Now, obviously in the network, it's more complex. We, I think we, we, we talked quite a bit on the complexity, but this is also why it drives the need to focus back on the service intent. I want to be able to tell my, and again, I need an end-to-end -end network orchestration system, tell it what it needs and it will, be smart enough to, to have solvers and find the best way to fulfill and to operate the service. And once again, if anything happens in the network, uh, you know, load or a fault or something, it will also be smart enough to find the best way to, to maintain the service intent. Of course, you'll have multiple intents. So it's also a matter of, of uh, you know, uh, um, balancing these out. And by the way, it's not just operational stuff like a lower latency. It can also be to minimize cost. There can be like things like energy efficiency or priority, right? Police will be higher priority than others. So there's a lot of things that go in here to the mix. And that's before I mentioned the secret sauce of, of AI, which will come to, to really take it to the next level. Okay, well, let's, let's consider what are the key elements to achieve what, what I think is the holy grail. It's zero touch automation, isn't it? I mean, how do operators actually get there? So, you know, we, uh, we often look at it in, in, you know, in two key axes, right? The first is uh, the vertical axis from the business or the service intent or the BSS system, digital engagement, you know, you can call it a lot of names, but getting that requirement down to the network, what has to happen, how do I make it happen and fulfill it? And the other axis is horizontal across the network, right? Across the RAN, edge, transport, uh, of core, and, and again, even into the cloud. And I think a key element is this shift to an end-to-end -end approach, right? And the traditional operations is very siloed and it worked fine for many years when the system, you know, services were connectivity service and they were static. But when we go to this multi-domain new kind of world and when we want to maintain this zero touch approach, we must have this end-to-end -end approach. So we need an end-to-end -end orchestrator that can talk to each domain, but keep the, the business requirements or different uh, uh, um, intentions in place. We need, for example, a unified, like an end-to-end -end inventory that knows the situation across my domains. What are my resources? What are the topologies? What is the different services made of? So I can do a quick root cause analysis and a quick decision how to fulfill and maintain the intent like we talked about before. And maybe even one level, you know, inventory is part of the whole data collection we need to get across the network. We know data is, is the new, Right, the, the oil of, of the multiple industries. So here's kind of the operational um, oil from, from assurance systems, correlating these from with inventory, with RAN analytics, with NWDAF, which is coming, but even you know, data from, from BSS, right? What is the revenue at risk that I'm putting from different service? Because that will affect my automation decisions. Uh, uh, what is the priority? I mentioned before, right? A, a police or security service will get a higher priority than a video streaming. Um, and even external data, right? When is the game day at the stadium? I know I need to allocate network resources there. I know that now public transport to there will be more loaded and I, you know, it will affect my decisions on you know, even things of like moving from cell to cell. So a lot of data uh, connected to this end-to-end -end approach. Okay, from what you're saying, it seems that operators are very much on a sort of network automation journey, but um, how would you assess where industry is on that journey path and, and what are the main challenges still to overcome? So the challenge is in a way that 5G, again, first of all, it's, it's meeting the, the expectations, right? People think 5G is already here for many years, but we know 5G standalone is just starting and the automation in that relation has to evolve and adapt. Um, and the other thing to consider is the fact we're not, you know, almost all the operators we're working with, there are very few greenfield operators. So you typically have systems in place, right? You have traditional inventory, you have traditional orchestration systems, uh, and, and nobody wants to rip and replace everything in the big transformation. And, and much of the challenge we are doing with our customers is around how to best leverage existing assets and come with this end-to-end -end overlay and do this transformation focused on use cases on what we want to do, but still advancing on this journey to enhance operation. 
Um, and at the same time, we're also exploring, we mentioned slicing, right? Exploring these POCs, how to get practical, you know, get from hype to reality. How would it work when you have to orchestrate two vendors at the RAN, three vendors at the core with the dynamic edge placement focusing on the service intent? So it's, you know, POC has the benefit of being kind of independent, but in parallel, we always keep in mind this idea of, of making the best of what you already have, especially, you know, the, the global financial situation, et cetera. Um, and in a way, you know, I think it's similar to, to the cloud journey. If, you know, people see today the cloud where it is that it's, it's not, I wouldn't say the end state, but a very, very advanced state. We forget where it started as very simple kind of storage services, very static, very manual. And then over time became more digital, more automated, more exposed. The network is for sure on that journey. Um, and again, I'm happy to say we're on this journey along with many of our customers. Okay, thanks, Ron. Thanks very much for those insights on network automation. It's been great speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.